Hi guys, welcome back to Just Me and Charlie. As you can see today, we have a special guest. You may have seen him from different circles, some of you from the fitness circle. Um, he's an L1 certified CrossFit trainer. He's an online coach, a nutrition consultant, and a motivator. You may also have seen him from a YouTube channel, Over25, where he's made a couple of appearances there. He's also a husband and, um, and a father, and most importantly today, a dog dad. As you can see here, his dog here is, uh, Mamba is here. Yeah, so Karibu Sana to the channel, um, Shiv. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for, so, for gracing nice. us with your presence. Thank you. That was a very nice introduction. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Where did your love for dogs start? Uh, my love for dogs has always been there ever since I could remember. Uh -huh. um, ever since I was, what, what can I remember? How, how young was I? Four? That's, yeah. how, that's how far you can, you know, remember that I just love dogs anywhere I went. Not just dogs, but I think all animals. Yeah. Um, dogs, cats, fish. Yeah. Um, mice, anything. I was just really interested in them. Yeah. But dogs just had a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you guys own pets when you were younger? Yes. Home? Yes, we did. We had a cat. Uh, we had two dogs. Um, what cat died? We got another cat. <laughs> um, we had fish. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. For, fast forward a couple of years. Yeah. How, how was this renewed or how did you get to a point where you're like, okay, I love dogs when I was younger, yeah. I need to get back. How, how, how long ago was this and, and what triggered mm. that? Um, when we were young, I think we had our dogs till um, we had to move out of our house at the time. So yeah. they had to be moved to shags. And that's just usually a sad story because yeah. they're like, I ah, you just know they will be taken care of as well yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. Mm. Um, but between then and now, I think high school we didn't have, uni we didn't have just because of the house and space. I was a major factor. Yeah. But I always knew I want a dog and I'm getting a dog yeah. no matter what. So I knew that, you know, where I live yeah. has to be somewhere I can accommodate an animal or... Yeah more you know yeah um so yeah that has just been a, something that i knew i always have to do mm -hmm. fast forward i finally got one him mamba yeah um now as an adult uh when a year and a half ago just yeah. a year and a half ago yeah yeah so thinking about getting a dog now at this particular stage of all the breeds why a rotoiler why a rotoiler um i'd done a lot of research yeah. on dogs yeah. uh, what kind of dogs i like what kind of temperament i'm looking for having a family and what i'm capable of yeah um so i was looking for something that doesn't bark much because yeah. i knew i have kids so yeah. i'm like okay i'm gonna have i have a daughter and we're expecting my other daughter my second born yeah so i knew i want something that's quiet yeah. uh, but i also just love the rottweilers look yeah. and uh, personalities they're a bit they're very confident we're very also a bit hard-headed but yeah. they, i think they look really good and also i looked at their grooming how yeah. easy is it to groom this dog i knew i have to get a short hair dog yeah um something i don't have to groom every single day maybe just yeah. once a week you know yeah um, german shepherds or yeah, something else yeah exactly yeah, you he know a lot. um i knew it was, a roti also from i think caesar milan a long time ago yeah i saw his rottweilers i was like that's the dog i want yeah you know yeah. um i know they have a bad rep yeah in very many places Quite around much. the world even <laughs> here but i at the end of the day i seriously think it's just how you bring your dog up yeah. you know and yeah. if your dog's um a working dog yeah you know are you getting a working dog or are you getting like a toy dog yeah. kind of thing yeah. you know you have to know that this dog has needs you have to research its needs yeah what it needs to do in terms of play um how it reacts when you do things mm -hmm. um what kind of food it needs uh what it diseases it's prone to so i, I kind of researched all that yeah i was like yeah i think the rotola is the one um how does that conversation go when you have a life partner, when you have a wife? <laughs> you know, it's one thing to convince them yeah. to get a dog. Yeah. It's a whole other conversation to convince <laughs> your life partner or your wife that we need to wow. get a trailer. How did that conversation go? Um, wow. That takes, that takes us back. Because 
she at, well, like from the very first time we met we've been together 11 years now yeah so from the first time we met she knew i loved dogs because i've always talked about dogs they used to have a dog at their grandma's yeah. that i used to go i used to walk i used to you know tell them things about yeah you know um so she knew very well that i'm get we're getting a dog yeah it, no matter what yeah so there was an initial plan you yeah. know not to get a rottweiler immediately but to get yeah. a breed that's less yeah um working and big because yeah. she at the time was scared of big dogs yeah they had a terrier so she yeah. was scared of big dogs yeah but you know it's a lot of just talking and making your partner feel um secure in that you know what you're doing when you're getting this yes um you have to be able to show you know them that you will be responsible at the end of the day for this animal yeah so yeah it turned out that i went to the breeder the breeder had two dogs the breeder mm -hmm. had a english springer spaniel yeah and a rottweiler yeah and they had two springer spaniels left and one rottweiler yeah. initially i talked to her about the rotis yeah then you know she was like please just let's just get a smaller one nini, nini. but as soon as i got there i also didn't know much about the springer spaniel so i just researched quick and i saw that they need a lot more work in terms of sniffing they're really agile they yeah. need all these things to do and i'm yeah. like i don't think i have the energy yeah to um i, I can't give this dog what it needs basically i'm yeah. not that active our yeah. lifestyle is not that active you yeah. know for a hey, going sniffing or oh, jumping agility <laughs> nini, nini. maybe if it was just me and the dog but yeah. with the children and you yeah. don't have that time yeah and i was like hey this roti also we're feeling each other's vibe yeah and i know rotis don't need as much exercise to be honest they yeah. are a bit you know just morning and evening yeah. when it suns out they don't do nothing kind yeah. of thing you yeah. know um and also at the time when i saw the puppies they all um i was looking for cues um to see which one connects yeah because i feel like that's very important when you're picking a puppy and he came right to me like yes. He came straight, he sniffed me, he sat down. Yeah. I was like, that's the one. Yeah. He's printed on me like this from the very beginning. And the others were just sniffing around. They didn't really care about me. And I was like, <laughs> okay, our energies don't match. Then it's not for me. Yeah. My energy and mumbles matched from the very beginning. I was yeah. like, yeah, that's the yeah. guy. So I literally called her when I was at the breeders. And I'm like, babe. Can we, I'm coming home with the Rottweiler. Can I please come home with this Rottweiler? Yeah. So it was like a 10 minute talk. Then she was like, yes, just get him. I told the breeder, second thoughts, I'm getting him yeah. in the car home. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So it took years <laughs> yes. of, you know, desensitizing. Yeah. Or yeah. And preparing and yes, painting and, and all of that. Yeah. 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 So your Rottweiler comes home. Yeah. What do you do to, to make everyone at home feel comfortable about um, having him around? Yeah. Do you train him? Do you invest in his training? Like, yeah. what, what was his upbringing like when, when he came um, home? So I got him at exactly three months, two days to three months. Yeah. Um, so he's pretty young. So, you know, I'd done all the research on what to do when you bring the dog home, everything, all the yeah. YouTube videos, all the books if possible. So I basically just followed that protocol. Mm -hmm. So when he got home, I immediately showed him the whole house, you know, I knew it's training from the moment he steps in the door, mm -hmm. who steps in the door first kind of things, you know. Yeah. So I knew, okay, I have to take the lead. I'm the leader from now on, end of story kind of thing. Yeah. And he has to know there are other people above him in the house. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, my wife, that's my daughter. My other, second daughter wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. So he's like three months older than her. Yeah. And um, here you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so i yeah basically you know show him the house start training him tell him you know and the first two days actually i did not leave the house yeah. for two days yeah i was literally on him like a hawk yeah so where he's like we slept together outside on the couch mm -hmm. um we did everything together basically yeah so he imprinted like immediately yeah you know from the very first day we went for a walk yeah. you know came in uni we're going outside for a walk came back in you know so i started the routine yeah i think that's that's what i'm trying to say yeah. i yeah. started the routine from day one yeah. this is how it's going to be so literally every single poop and pee of his yeah. in the first two days yeah. i was with him like this so as soon as i feed him as soon as sorry he's about to poop <laughs> 
carry him, you know, this is where you're supposed to cook. Uh -huh. Unless it happens, you're like, okay, uh -huh. that's fine. But you try to show him this is the poop area. Mm -hmm. So, because mm -hmm. we, we were in an apartment at the time yeah. for one month before we moved yeah. out here. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just start the routine and the training from the moment mm -hmm. he steps in the house. Yeah. It's training and routine. Even from the moment you pick him up, yeah. how you relate to it, it's routine from then on. Yeah. yeah. How do you handle work? And, and being present um, mm. with your dog. I think just managing your, your, your schedule yeah. is very important. And also since he, there's already a routine set for him, mm -hmm. you know, I know in the morning I have classes from this time to this time. So I know I either walk him before, I walk him after. Yeah. And as long as I give him basically his exercise, because I mm. think they're simple creatures at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Just exercise them, you know, feed them and train them and they're chilled. Yeah. And give them some affection afterwards, after all that has been done, you yeah. know. Yeah. And that's basically what they do. As long as you give the dog what it needs, yeah. it really has no cause to, you know, go after everything. I, I remember when I was thinking about um, getting a dog, for me, my reasons were a bit different. As I was talking to my friends, my male friends, about getting a dog, there's this notion and expectation that we should get retwillers and German shepherds uh -huh. and pit bulls and all of those things. Like, yeah. What do you think about that? Do you, does it really matter what breed we get or because we're men we're supposed to get manly dogs? No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get you. Uh, I think you should get a dog that fits your lifestyle. Yeah. 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 If you know um, you're not active or you have a sedentary lifestyle versus an active lifestyle, or can you handle a working dog? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I think, <laughs> I think, um, I think if you are going to get a working dog, you have to be really ready for a bit more primal instinct coming from the dog. Yeah. Because um, I think there's a difference between those dogs versus the other ones. They yeah. have this drive that comes out a lot easier than on the smaller ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's a dog that fits your lifestyle, and that's, I think, your lifestyle and energy, and I think that's very important. Yeah. Very important. Yeah. You know, don't get a collie if yeah. you're not going to have you're some piece energy. of land and yeah. high energy, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those dogs are runners. Yeah. How, how has he impacted the quality of your life um, as an individual and as a family as well? Well, uh, I think he's first kept me a lot present, a lot yeah. more present around the house. Yeah. Uh, not that my family didn't, but, um, and he's forced me to have a lot of more routine and schedule. I was already more of a routine guy, yeah. but with him and then with the kids also, I'd yeah. say we just have to have a routine and yeah. a way of running the house. Yeah. Otherwise things go out the window and all over the place. Yeah. And it also just motivates you to, you know, <laughs> earn more money yeah. to feed them. <laughs> yeah, I was actually going to <laughs> You know, next. feed yeah. and groom and vet and everything. Yeah. You know, it costs something. Yeah, so you also have to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. step step up. Yeah. 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 And what has been the most challenging thing about having um, Mamba and him being a Rotuela? What, what is it, the most challenging experience having him around? Most challenging experience? Yeah. Um, Hmm. Just if I'm not around, yeah. Um, and this is this I'd say this is kind of my fault because I haven't got a kennel for him yet outside. Yeah. yeah. So if I'm not around, I know he can be a bit. Sometimes he doesn't listen to people. Yeah. But he doesn't do anything like bad, bad. But I know he can decide. I'll just take a toy and you know. Yeah. I'll keep it. Yeah. Or I'll chew something. He, this one shows his frustration if he hasn't been yeah. um, given what he did, needs or deserves. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, what's the biggest challenge? Oh, and when we travel, you have to take him to like a boarding school. Yeah. 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 A boarding house or something. And you have to budget and plan for that. Yeah. 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 But otherwise, mm. um, yeah, I'd say he's like another child. Yeah. Yeah. That, Honestly, that, that um, it's maybe because I have children. I, but yeah, either way, if even if you don't, he's a, he's a child, um, yeah. and it's more or less the same thing. They need to eat, they need structure, they need to sleep, they need... So it's like if there's a routine running, mm. it's kind of mm. easy, mm. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe just um, picking back on what you mentioned about the food and the vets and all of that. Yeah. What does it take to maintain a trailer? Like, how much are we talking? Is it a monthly uh, budget? Is it <laughs> a weekly budget? Honestly, I'd say it hasn't been that hard, because... Yeah. 
um, I'd say fortunately he hasn't had any major problems, yeah. uh, illnesses or anything. Yeah. Um, he actually hasn't really had any illnesses. Mm -hmm. um, he just had a problem with his leg and that's something that really can't be fixed or anything. Other yeah. than that, yeah. um, the food um, I buy monthly, I buy the huge bag of dog food yeah. and his diet is kind of simple. Yeah. I'd say it's you know just dog food, uh, bones with a bit of meat, mm -hmm. maybe three times a week, four times, mm -hmm. um, and maybe liver and something I throw in every other day. Yeah. And you know, that's it. You know, and then I add other things that are like natural vitamins, you know, like the coconut oil, yeah. um, turmeric, yeah. Um, I put some apple cider sometimes in his water or in yeah. his food. Yeah. Um, I give him also his supplements for like joints yeah. and everything. Yeah. And like maybe there's a time he had some ear things starting. Yeah. Just because I think when you stay with them enough, you know when they're not yes. okay. Yes. So yes. I noticed he has an ear problem and, you know, quick talk to the vet or google and you know it's like oh so apple cider rubbing it in their ears and everything can cure this yeah. or can help so you know try trial and error yeah, also yeah, yeah and you know it cures him so it's, it's not that much it's kind of it's below 10k a month for sure mm -hmm. it can even be around six seven k a month if i don't yeah. buy treats and everything which i stopped buying too much yeah. of because yeah. i don't also don't trust what this they feel very plastic. I don't usually <laughs> trust ingredients in them. So I just try to keep it natural. Yeah. Yeah. And he loves bones. So the biggest bones that there are. So, and those are cheap. Like for a kg is like 150 bob, even yeah. 100 bob. So yeah. it's, it's okay. So maybe just talking about you as a fitness trainer, you know, motivator and mm -hmm. on, an online coach. Um, why, do you, why do you care about that as an individual? And why do you care about people living healthy and just trying to be at a better place both physically, I mean physically, mm. mentally and emotionally. Why, why is that? Um, I'd say this is this something that is a passion, yeah. uh, just like the dogs. Um, I've always been in sports and yeah. I actually wanted to be a footballer growing yeah. up. Like that was my dream. I want to be a footballer, end of story, yeah. you know, but it didn't work out. Yeah. So I just had to find a way to stay in sports, uh, mm. first of all, all through primary, high school, uni, and when I cleared, I knew I wanted to be in the sports world, but also now getting the degree for what exactly I wanted, and the sports science and yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we couldn't afford it. Yeah. So I just did something here. But as soon as I had the opportunity, I basically jumped ship yeah. and just did what I wanted from the very beginning, from scratch, with like zero bob, and I was like, it has to work. End yeah. of story kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I care about it because I've seen what it has also done for me, uh, my family, yeah. um, other people, like life testimonies, um, and it improves the quality of life. Like end of story, it improves mm -hmm. the quality of life. Mm -hmm. um, whether it means uh, medication, getting sick, mm -hmm. um, you know, how many times you get sick in a year. I'd, I'd say, you know, sometimes I don't get sick at all yeah. in the whole year, you know, yeah. or once maybe twice maximum kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it resonates across the board mm -hmm. for, you know, keeping fit. And I don't really have problems in that way. Mm -hmm. So, and I feel fit, I feel good. Um, yeah. This is good vibes. Yeah. Um, and I'd like everyone to be able to feel that way too. Yeah. You know, I, I'm like, this is it. This is how it is. Like, yeah. try it out, see how it feels, yeah. see how you feel. Yeah. Stop it <laughs> enough, you know. See yeah. how it feels, yeah. and then um, from there, leave it. Yeah, you know, see how it feels, and then tell me if you want to continue or not. Yeah. So I'd like everyone to be able to feel this and just have this. This what I feel I want to share it with everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just in case you haven't heard about him, uh, in which case you've probably been living under a rock. But in case anyone hasn't heard about you and your brand, yeah, what would you say you offer as an online coach, as a motivator, as a fitness guru? Uh, what, what, what are some of your services and where can they come oh, to go to find your services? Um, so I offer meal plans, workout plans. Yeah. I do training in the gym. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Excuse me, mister. <laughs> Don't disturb people. <laughs> Be polite. Um, training in the gym. Yeah. Um, and 
Yeah, that's, that's actually what I do in terms of the training part. Yeah. That's training the gym, meal plans, workout plans. However, I also do social media influencing. If there's yeah. anyone out there who wants me to market <laughs> their product on social media, yeah. I also do that. So I try to do products that are related to being, to wellness, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you can reach me on Instagram at Shiv Simani. Um, yeah, that's the best place to reach me. Or shiv.simani at gmail.com. Yeah. 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 Um, just going back to Mamba and your life with Mamba. Yeah. What kind of reaction do you get from people when you work with him outside? Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, guys, guys, give me you, away. You, you, you being a <laughs> fitness guy and and you having a retailer, like, what kind of reaction do you get <laughs> when you walk? When um, you walk the road? I don't pay too much attention to the reactions, but yeah. some reactions are a lot. Yeah. Um, you can tell when someone's really scared of dogs and yeah. when they're not. If someone's scared of dogs, sometimes they cross. Yeah like as far as possible i don't want to know yeah kind of thing yeah. if they're not they just walk past um others really like him and they admire him yeah um yeah yeah so it's yeah. different reactions yeah. there's the dog lovers who want to pet him there's the ones who don't want to be anywhere close and there's others who just don't care yeah um, yeah yeah as we conclude um what would you like to say to anyone out there who's looking to get a dog Looking to get a dog, yeah. um, I'd say go for it. Uh, but before you go for it, yeah. um, do your research on what kind of breed, your lifestyle, how it meshes with the dog that you're trying to get. It's not about this, how the dog looks. It's about the dog's temperament, the dog's energy, mm -hmm. the dog's work. Yeah. Um, you know, set your home um, in a way that basically set yourself and the dog up for success. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, prepare to be training them, taking care of them. Um, they're also very needy and emotional. As you can see, he's getting very whatever because he feels like he should, you know, be yeah. doing more than just lying down. Kind oh, yeah. Of thing. Yeah. They get you bored. Know? They so get you have bored. to also be able to <laughs> invest your time and your years in yeah. this dog. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because they live for long. They live for... 15 years? Yeah, uh, 12, yeah. 12, this, 12, 15 one's, years. this one's maybe, Droti's maybe 10 max. So 10 max, yeah. yeah, but that's, 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 yeah. that's a long time. They could above, but yeah. that's a really old Droti. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really rare. Yeah. 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 Just before we sign off, yeah. I saw you have really cool merchandise for, um, for Mamba. Maybe you could just tell us a bit more about that and where guys could go to. Yeah, the uh, definitely. Uh, the Mamba match. Yeah. Um, just DM me on Instagram yeah. or email me yeah. and um, yeah, I will hook you up. A sweatshirt goes for 2600 yeah. and they're only on order basis. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like I have, yeah, order yeah. basis. So it's yeah. just something I'm just doing, yeah. um, you know, just to also kind of change the way people look at Rottweilers. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, as vicious, but he's, he's a good boy, yeah. you know. I think Hollywood has also played a very huge role in, in yeah. demonizing retailers and Doberman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. When we were kids, this is what I think it was Omen, and I yeah. think they used yeah. a, is it a roti or Those a Doberman? Those are Those Yeah, are and you know, from just like this like evil hell, dog. Like hellhound dogs. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so that was a scary movie, though. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I think my, my dad bought those movies. I look back and I'm like, I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah. We watched those movies when we were between class four and class six and couldn't sleep I, for yeah. I have never gotten those images out of my Me head. Too. Me yeah. too. Me so, too. So thank you so much for coming onto the channel. Thank you um, for having me. It was Brad. it was nice to hear your story. I'm sure guys have also now heard about you and your dog and, and seen you in a different light. Yeah. And um yeah, thank you so much for, for watching. If you like what you saw here today. Please give, give us a thumbs up. Please share your thoughts, feedback, comments. I mean, uh, your thoughts. <laughs> Sorry. If you like what you saw today, please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts, questions, or feedback, please share those in the comment section. We are going to add links to all his platforms in the description box so that you can go and reach out to him if you'd like to um, um, get one of his services, fitness services, if you'd like to get merchandise. We'll have his Instagram and his website linked in the description box below. Please remember to subscribe uh, as well. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. But yeah, thank you so much for your support. And thank you so much, Chief, for having us here today. Anytime, fam. Yeah. 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 Until next time, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs>